All right, I'll call our September 16th, 2014 Planning Commission meeting to order. Kathy, will you take roll? Chair Adams. Here. Commissioner Stewart. Here. Commissioner Olivers. Here. Commissioner Sosen. Here. Commissioner Sand. Here. Commissioner Jordison. Here. Commissioner Holland. Here. Commissioner Tisdale. Here. Our first item on the agenda is the approval of meeting minutes from our September 2nd, 2014 meeting. Does anyone have any revisions or comments to the uh, meeting minutes as proposed? Okay, hearing none, do I have a motion for approval as proposed? So moved. Second. Great. Kathy? Commissioner Tisdall? Yes. Commissioner Holland? Abstain. Commissioner Jordison? Yes. Commissioner Sand? Yes. Commissioner Sosen? Yes. Commissioner Olivers? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Chair Adams? Yes. And, and just as a formality, I believe Commissioner Tisdale is acting as our alternate tonight, oh, that's right? Because we have a full commission. So. Excuse me. Uh, all right. So as we've done uh, at recent meetings, uh, and uh, we started to do this summer, we'll start with uh, commissioner reports. Commissioner Tisdale, do you have a report for us? Nothing. Okay. Nothing for me. No report. No report. No report. No report. Nothing to report. Okay. I have nothing to report right now. Anything from staff? Uh, Dave Koenig, planning staff. Just that uh, we uh, probably uh, plan on having uh, meetings the first and third Tuesdays in October. So we'll be getting you agendas and what's on those. So. Um, but anyway, so just to put those on your calendar. So. Is that first day and the third? The, well, it would be October 7th and October 21st. Okay. Okay. Nothing to add. Nothing else? Okay. Uh, we've started with the opportunity for anyone who wants to provide citizen comment to do it at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, if it doesn't provide for or isn't it about any of the items that we have on our agenda, which we have two tonight, are there any citizen comments at this point? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and move on to our first item on the agenda, which is a workshop uh, on the Port of Everett revised plans and standards for the Waterfront Place project. And Dave, I think I'm starting with you. Yeah, right? uh, Dave Koenig, planning staff, and wait till this uh, comes up on the screen. But I'll, um, the Port of Everett ha is, uh, has submitted to us uh, and requested an amendment to the 2005 development agreement that we uh, have with the port on at that time called the North Marina Redevelopment Project and it's now be called the uh, Waterfront Place uh, Central or Waterfront Place Development. Uh, this is the aerial of the area uh, that the port has provided um, to orient you. This is uh, 13th Street or what used to be 13th Street here. That street was vacated and uh, I'll be part of the discussion tonight. Uh, this is 14th about here, uh, marina um, on the south side, uh, the new marina on the north side. Um, these buildings here were part of the uh, original redevelopment plan. That is the dry boat uh, facility that is there and operating. And also the um, uh, port offices and uh, other tenants that they have here and also the boat yard that's back in here. So th that was part of the original uh, plan. And so some of the plan has been implemented from the original, um, uh, like the, you know, the new marina, uh, the dry boat storage, and the offices and uh, rental space here. And then also some of the improvements have been put in. Uh, the 13th Street extension here uh, has been put in. The port has also been doing a lot of environmental me uh, uh, mediation because it was an industrial area and so they've been uh, cleaning up the sites and are in the process of doing that. They're concentrating that effort right now in, in this area right here, have a contract to uh, clean up that area. But they've been going through the site and cleaning up uh, uh, the uh, site for development. So the purpose tonight is to uh, talk to the Planning Commission just to introduce to you this project that's coming your way. Um, the environmental review will be starting uh, here hopefully this week, um, uh, first part of next week, uh, uh, where we'll go out for a uh, uh, 21-day review period. During that time, we have scheduled on September 30th, 
down at the port a meeting um, that will focus on the environmental review and the project so people can come and uh, you know discuss it. It'll be a open house format with a, a presentation at 645. So we're coordinating that with the port and it'll be down at the port offices down there. Uh, the uh, property was zoned a waterfront commercial with a planned development overlay. It was first approved in 2003 and then amended in 2005 uh, at the request of the Port and Maritime Trust. Um, the standard for review that we have in our code for changes to uh, the uh, uh, plan, so there was a conceptual plan approved in 2005, is that the amendments are in the best long-term interest of the community, and that's the overall kind of standard that's in the Everett Municipal Code and uh, is what you as a commission will, you know, uh, use as part of your uh, decision making. So the port must show that the amended plan is in the best long-term interest of the community, and the planning commission will uh, take this determination and make it a recommendation to city council after you have uh, the evidence that will be given to you, the written material and testimony that you receive over the time period. Um, some of the issues that are um, uh, that were before and are uh, also uh, for your consideration this time is first is building heights. Um, the original uh, uh, 2003 heights were changed in 2005, uh, and so there was an increase at that time. And um, th at that time, the heights were based on the site plan at the time, so there was a site plan, and actually that. That site plan was implemented through a subdivision, so the land has been subdivided, but the plan is to re-subdivide it into the new plan. Uh, that included view corridors, which I'll, I'll mention here, and also the street grid that was established. So there was a plan that was established with a, a site plan, view corridors, and a street grid. There's no, uh, the proposal is not to increase the height higher than that was originally approved, but there will be some heights increase in the view corridor where currently it was limited to just uh, structured parking and then also adjusted to fit the new street system and I'll show that example. Also the Weyerhaeuser building is proposed to be uh, relocated and that's higher than 35 feet so that and that was going to that would be in the shoreline so the Weyerhaeuser building would also be have to be accommodated at a higher height. Uh, here's the 2005 permitted heights, and you can see uh, that uh, this is the grid system that was established. Um, uh, the yellow is the 35 feet. Uh, the highest was 65 feet, which is this kind of light blue. Uh, this orangish is 45, and then 55 was this gray. There was also, I believe it was 95 feet, there was an idea of having a tower here. That was uh, uh, something that would be uh, for a fisherman's uh, tower. Uh, that's not uh, happening and, and not proposed this time. And this is where the dry boat storage was put. So that's the building that's already located there. Um, at the time, there was a view study that was done um, by the port, uh, including uh, a test with balloons that went up so you could see uh, where the heights were going to be. But there was also a computer-generated uh, view study. That has been redone as part of the new environmental review and be part of the packet of information that you get. And that will be available for the public to review and comment on. So there, the new heights were studied as a part of that uh, study there. So here's the plan that was approved that I just showed you. And here's the new plan. So uh, you can see here is where 13th Street is or was, uh, and 14th Street. Uh, 14th Street uh, would still remain, but the concept now is not to have this uh, uh, center uh, 13th Street extension through here, but to have a uh, uh, road system around and then through in uh, three locations. Um, and so in some areas, you can see here, this pad here is a little bit wider than this pad. Um, up here, uh, up in this corner here, there's actually a reduction in height in part. So this was 35 feet and here's 45. The new plan has the 45 feet moved back uh, uh, from what it was before. So there's some 
little tweaks in it, and uh, when you get the information, you can uh, uh, study it some more. And might have the port provided you some information tonight, so you, you uh, might be a, a part of that too. So, and you also we emailed you this PowerPoint also, so you would have that. Um, land uses, there's no proposed changes in the uses that are allowed under the contract. Um, the uses are moved around on the site, and, um, and so the housing and jobs are more integrated. Uh, the last plan had a primary focus on um, residential down that 13th Street spine. Um, the port is proposing that, that that area be jobs and then housing out at the end. Um, and so, uh, so there is a uh, emphasis uh, more on the jobs this time uh, than there was last time, and, and so the, uh, uh, they can uh, discuss that. Uh, there is also a, a desire um, in the current contract within the shoreline master program, which is 200 feet back from the shoreline, there is no housing allowed. They would like to have housing in part of the plan uh, up to 100 feet away from the shoreline. So th that is a shoreline amendment. We've already discussed that with the uh, uh, Department of Ecology and met with Ecology, and so it, it's being considered as a minor amendment to the shoreline master program. And so uh, if you recommend that and council accepts it, that would then have to go to the Department of Ecology for their approval. Um, the last plan, um, uh, didn't have, um, this is just a comment, uh, because the last plan didn't really uh, leave a place for the traditional fishing fleet. Uh, uh, there, w it was, um, there's, there was no kind of upland area or a place where the traditional fishing fleet that's been down there um, uh, could be or be seen. Um, and this one, uh, the plan integrates the fishing fleet into the development, makes an amenity for the development. And then also um, uh, accommodates areas so that there is a place where you could walk by and there'd be uh, a dock that's specifically for the fishing fleet and where they, you know, fishermen can work on their nets, et cetera. So uh, it's being seen in this plan as an integral part of the plan where before, you know, you, if you looked at the plans, you couldn't see really where the fishing fleet would be and, and the port's proposing an area for that. Uh, parking. Uh, the current contract requires the residential parking to be in closed structure. Uh, the requirement is being removed as a part of this and includes both surface parking and enclosed structure. So it, it's a, a request that in, uh, before the uh, developer w had planned on doing it all in structured parking. Uh, the parking study has been updated and will be a part of that environmental review, so it'll be part of the documents that you'll be getting. So that, that's another part of the overall plan that's being updated uh, with this new plan. Uh, the open space and public access, the site plan has been changed with a, a little bit different road configuration that I mentioned. Um, instead of a formal amphitheater at the very end, so at 13th Street, if you go down to 13th Street and at the very end, there was gonna be a hardscape amphitheater. Um, that's no longer proposed, and it's now a larger open space park that would be from basically 13th Street North on the north uh, west corner, and also include the uh, relocated warehouser uh, building there that would be part of uh, programming and such out there. And the port can talk about that in more detail, their plans there. So it's a, it's a, a larger area out there. And it's also a softer scape than just the amphitheater was gonna be a more hard scape type uh, uh, development there. The trail still is around the edge of the whole project. So the trail system, uh, you still be able to walk uh, uh, around the, uh, the t uh, entire circumference of the site. Um, open space, they've done calculations on the open space and the they provide a greater amount of open space compared to the 2005 amendment and that will be in the information you receive. Um, the public dock space, there was some public dock space at the end of 13th in the original plan and they actually had some pictures of tall ships there and other things you know, out in the river. Uh, that's being moved in and integrated more into the area where I showed where that cleanup is happening. So they hope to bring in people, a visitor dock that's further in uh, n near restaurants there and such, and instead of being 
out at the, that where the maritime trust showed something out at the very end. And that will allow people to also walk on those docks and will be, uh, so at water level, you'll be at, you know, be at the higher level and you'll be able to walk down and be on the water, next to the water on those uh, visitor docks. And that'll be very, uh, you know, in, very close inside the, uh, uh, the marina. I, I, I don't know what all the thinking is there uh, with the port, they can explain that, but I know in the past there's been discussions about when people come to Everett that are on boats and such, you're pretty far out and you come in and you are in further, you're closer to bus and other you know, facilities at the port. I don't know if that's part of the thinking, but I know that there's, that's been some feedback that we've had in the past down there. Uh, the design guidelines and standards, um, as a part of that 2005 amendment, there was very detailed uh, design guideline standards that were adopted as a part of the height increase. Um, the modifications to the standards are proposed, and this will be shown in two ways. One, there'll be uh, sections of it will be in legislative format, and another section of it will be just here's new standards because they are um, the standards that were done before were um, that were added to the uh, project were maritime trusts, almost CCNRs, I would call them, you know, um, for the project, and it got into very specific details regarding what they had a vision for that. The port is, has modified those, uh, and that'll be what you'll be looking at, but it's not a legislative format, so it's this standard will replace this other standard, but there will be parts of it that'll show uh, uh, um, the legislative format. That's something we worked out with the port because um, uh, the, uh, from a practical standpoint, it, it would have been difficult to show changes on that, so it's really, you have to say, okay, here's the new standards and that's what they're proposing, so. Um, digital or electronic message sign, um, the current code uh, that's out there has no digital electronic message sign. Uh, the proposal is to allow one digital or electronic message sign at the entrance at 13th Street uh, within the agreement area. The question is, how will the intensity of this digital electronic uh, message lighting and movement affect surrounding land uses? So it's a policy issue and uh, uh, one that they're asking to allow to have the electronic message sign down there at, at the corner of what is 13th and uh, West Greenview Drive. Uh, parking management staff um, satisfied that the approached used to establish the parking right, uh, overall parking requirements uh, of the project is sound. Uh, we've had, um, that's part of what we uh, initially had. We received the documents from the port. Uh, we circulated them internally. Uh, we've just got comments back from them uh, on that and our traffic engineering and such are comfortable with that. And so that's a document that will be going out for public review, but they've redone the parking management plan and um, uh, our, our traffic engineers are comfortable with that. And it's also over time to be a phased approach to development will, which would allow for you know, uh, adjustment to parking standards if necessary, meaning if, you know, as the project goes forward and we see if there's issues, we can have them you know, redo the parking study and say, okay, what's, what are the issues here? So, so it'd be a, also phased. And that could reflect on tenants and such. You know, if they ended up with very high intensity tenants uh, versus low intensity tenants, or, you know, because there's assumptions in the parking study on types of tenants, and if they end up being uh, less intensive, then there's less parking required. If there's more intensive, then, there, then we'd have to work with the port on that. Uh, the process is that the environmental review will include the public meeting that I already talked about. Um, we will be going out for that uh, comment period to the public. Uh, we will then um, have a planning commission workshop and then a planning commission public hearing. Um, the number of meetings is up to you, so um, th this is a, a proposed schedule. If you're comfortable, you know, in two more meetings approving, that's up to you. If you want to take more time, uh, that's up to you too. So I don't, we don't want you, uh, I know we put pressure on you on the riverfront, and uh, I want you just to feel comfortable, you know, we'll keep moving it along, uh, but uh, but um, uh, we want to make sure that you have time to review the information and uh, are ready to make action. And then uh, after your recommendation is developed, we would do a briefing in front of city council 
and then have a public hearing and decision at another meeting in front of them. And now uh, we'll, uh, the port, uh, Terry from the port is here and will present uh, their project. Uh, my name is Terry Becciuello, and I am the um, Chief of Business Development for the Port of Everett, responsible for properties in Marina. Um, it's kind of exciting to be here tonight. Uh, it's been 14 months of work um, since I came to the port last year, working with um, the planning department. So we're excited to be before the commission tonight. Um, some of this might uh, duplicate what uh, Dave was talking about, but I know that there's a lot to absorb. I just wanted to point out that um, these books right here are being printed for you, and um, I think that you'll be getting them next week, but they include all of our studies and detailed information. So, um, And then tonight I brought a set of the exhibits from this, so you'd have something to hold you over till you get the big book. <laughs> Uh, Waterfront Place Central is Everett's 65-acre mixed-use site. Some of you know the long history of the site, which has been an important focal point of the city's commerce for more, for longer than the port's own 100-year history, nearly 100-year history. As we look forward to the port's centennial celebration in 2018, it is exciting to be a part of a reimagining process. Waterfront Place promises to bring major private investments and a waterfront neighborhood reflecting the history and the culture of the city of Everett. It is the port's goal to promote this location as a perfect place for jobs and lifestyles of the future and to build upon the reputation of Everett as a quality place to live. I want to recognize um, uh, Jeff McClure with RMC Architects and Lisa Lefebvre from the port who are here with me tonight. Let's see, next. And so um, we'll, we'll begin here with a quick peek of the recent past. This is an aerial photograph of the Waterfront Place Central Pier and its marina basins in 1999. Looking at this photo of the site, it's a reminder that regardless of how far there is still to go on this project, the port has already come a very long way and that is, um, and that because of these very difficult cleanup efforts, the reality for the future redevelopment is, last, is at last within reach. To recap the efforts and to bring forward um, a quality development on the site, I want to um, summarize a few actions that have been recently taken. Through 2011, the port has spent more than $12 million on environmental remediation of the site. More than 215 acres of the port's waterfront is under consent decree with the Department of Ecology, and we are happy to report that we are nearly 60% done with our cleanup liability. For Waterfront Place, we have just one major waterfront cleanup left, and on June 17th, the Port Commission awarded a $6.2 million contract to conduct the environmental cleanup of, and site restoration for the Everett Shipyard site, which is pictured here. The project includes replacing the 14th Street bulkhead removing old structures from the water of the northeast corner of the central marina to get at uh, 12,000 cubic yards of contaminated sediment. This project is currently underway and the rail has actually come out. A lot of the demolition is underway now. Following this project, more than 99% of the site will be ready for development. A few small projects remain in the Amron site and under the former Boiler Works Foundation, both will be accomplished in 2017. And together uh, with these efforts will result in a cleanup level to an unrestricted standard for safety for everyone to enjoy. This uh, 2011 picture is a recent, more recent picture of, of how the site just looked a few short years ago. This is the uh, Fisherman's Harbor area and Fast forwarding today, um, this photo is our most recent aerial shot of the cleanup area, and uh, I think it speaks for itself. We are very proud of this work, 
And what's not clear from the photo is the other work we've done in addition to the cleanup to prepare, the, uh, to prepare for the coming development. I think Dave summarized some of that. During the, the period of time between the failure of the Port Gardner Wharf Plan and this cleanup work, the port has continued to pursue its dream of revitalization of the marina district. As part of that pursuit, the, board, the port seated a Blue Ribbon Committee to provide guidance to the port about, how the, how, about the community's own vision for the site. When the port regained control of the district in 2011, it took the lessons learned from the prior process to make a more deliberate approach to approaching the development. Retaining the aid of an experienced waterfront developer, the port established its overarching touchstones for the project, which are these 11 criteria shown in the slide. Under categories of enhancing core values, developing a quality of place, assuring successful implementation, and conditions that would result in project success. These uh, criteria have been a constant for the port throughout the planning of this project and were used by a 20-member committee ad, ad hoc committee in developing important recommendations for the project. These are the highlights taken from an executive summary which is prepared for that or by that committee. They told the port that the project should have a stronger focus on job creation and the success of the marina and that the project should form uh, function more as a community asset for all of Everett and serve as a magnet for visitors to the community. Additionally, they wanted open space to be collected into larger connected spaces rather than spread out through pocket parks. And they advised us to retain site control versus, versus selling the development rights for the entire site. Our proposed project reflects the input in all aspects of what the uh, commission reported to us. This uh, slide here um, summarizes the development program. Um, the things that are the same, uh, heights, densities, quality, tax benefits, what's different, site control, more open space, and a reflection on Everett's heritage. Also uh, very much the same are the tax generating generating benefits. Snohomish County Alliance calculated for us the ongoing tax revenue to the city and the state, which would be about $8.6 million from property and sales tax upon completion. This is annual. Um, in terms of one-time revenues and considering the estimate of $360 million in private development and $33 million in public port investment, $3.6 million in sales tax would come from the project annually or one-time one sales revenues. The project uh, supports 2,000 jobs and additional construction jobs for the next seven to 10 years. With regards to what is the same, this diagram shows a comparison between the two plans. The wharf plan is on the left, the waterfront place on the right. The colors coincide with the number of feet from grade, which is also determined and unchanged from the wharf plan. The areas around the edge of the side are at 35 feet with tall, taller structure, structures in purple at 65, with the one exception is the warehouser building in the 35 foot area, which at the peak of its roof, it's around 43 feet. Um, and we plan to use that as a performance venue and a marina clubhouse as a historical uh, feature of our site. The small dot uh, indicates a single tower anticipated in the wharf plan for a tribute to the fishermen. Um, the actual fisherman tribute turned out to be much shorter, and so we've removed that. In our new waterfront plan, we show a focal point on the first building at the end of the street that you enter as a gateway, and it's an icon that's also important in the city-facing view for the project, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. This is one of the drawings from the view corridor study. Um, there is a 11 by 17 um, piece on this, and there are larger versions in the book when you get them, but um, these uh, view studies were completed by Company 39. They, it is the same company that did the previous height studies that show the visual um, differences in, from, the, from the bluff. Um, company 39 was acquired by um, PB or Parsons Brinkerhoff, so they were hard to find, but we did find them and track down the original files. Um, essentially, to preserve and enhance the access along the shoreline, the uh, port is requesting that the ordinance be modified. This drawing shows the opposite view, 
with the previous wharf plan in skyline with the waterfront plan superimposed over it with the red line. These changes are critical to the port's ability to mass the project to the center of the site away from the shoreline um, while achieving the desired densities and allows us to create higher quality open space around the perimeter of the site. I have a few illustrations here. Um, this illustration is not a bluff view, it's more of a middle of the bluff view closer to the project, but it's provided to um, depict the clock tower that the team envisions for the site. The district shown beyond the gateway is dedicated to the mill industry's history, and the clock tower is a gesture to the, hill, the history of the mills. The design of this clock, the workman's clock tower, is based on the daytime clock used by the Weyerhaeuser Mill in the 1800s. Um, if some of you have visited the port, you've seen the actual clock itself in our, our lobby. Um, this would be an artist's um, interpretation of the, the workman's clock. In the forefront, you'll also know, note the uh, flags of our trading partners. The port intends to display these flags there and change them out on celebrations such as all U.S. flags on Independence Day or for our U.S. naval ship arrival or Earth Day. But in, the, in most part, we want to be able to tell the international story of the port's mission and how we are connecting Everett to the world. Overall, the project increases open space by over 100,000 square feet from the waterfront or from the Port Gardner Wharf project and creates much larger areas for events and activities. This slide shows a comparison of the two plans with regard to open space. Again, the uh, left-hand side is the wharf and the right-hand side is waterfront place. Casually, an observer will see that the green areas indicating open space occupy a greater proportion of the outer edges of the project in the new plan right to the water's edge. And because there are two major parks, park features, Boxcar Park at the end of the pier and the Pacific Rim Plaza in the internal um, area, um, we create two fantastic, very different places than anything offered in the wharf plan. The Pacific Rim Plaza is at the end of 14th Street and it's more formal than the two large parks. This is a perfect wedding venue or a place for a community ceremony like a sister city dedication or an important media event. The park communicates the significance of the city of Everett as an international trading city. To aid in the design of the intent of the park, we have commissioned an illustration for um, Pacific Rim, but I don't have that tonight. This is Boxcar Park. Boxcar is named after the rail cars that used to receive their loads of shake cedars from the site. Uh, it will be a two acre informal park and we see it as a sister park to the beloved Jetty Island. It features wide open spaces in a natural play area with real tide pools, a portion of the Esplanade Trail as it wraps around the pier and the sunset, sunset steps, which are ideal for picnics at sunset. The most significant feature of the park is a community structure we envision to be relocated, um, the historical Weyerhaeuser building. This two-story building will serve as a marina clubhouse for groups such as the Sea Scouts, the Power Squadron, the Sailing Clubs, and an outdoor live performance venue. We also anticipate a sailcloth movie screen for boaters and visitors to enjoy as sounds are transmitted through a FM radio signal to the area. The community wanted larger, more useful open spaces, and this property provided a great opportunity to do so, as it is the most attractive from a recreational standpoint and the most costly from a development standpoint because of the depth of the water there. To give you an overall flavor of the site, I want to share the site plan and the districts with you next. This slide is a comprehensive view of the entire project site plus the north and south piers. The project incorporates all the areas into a very unique place we hope the city will name as one of its new neighborhoods, Waterfront Place. Within Waterfront Place are five districts created by the plan. Each district has a unique focus within the overall marine related design scheme that layers into the project the unique history and character of Everett. You are familiar with the Craftsman dif District and the Esplanade, which provide boater services and unifying trails via uh, vistas and park systems. 
The wharf's edge is carried over from the wharf plan as a residential focused mixed use area. The new, new to the project are the Fisherman's Harbor to the east next to West, West Marine View Drive and the Millwright District in the center of the site. These districts incorporate the name and design features from the city's industrial past to create a unique personality for the project. In Fisherman's Harbor, an expanded wooden wharf will home port saner and crab fishing vessels, while the mill right district streets and places are named for important job functions in the mill industry, suggesting the importance of the working person in Everett. The names include Millwright, Loop, Sawyer, Weaver, Chamfer, and Timberman. This illustration is drawn from the South Marina perspective and shows off the future Fisherman Harbor area next to the Westview Marine Drive. It's the very first piece of the project to be started. Along the wharf are the Saner vessels, vessels, a wooden wharf, a public access dock walk with activity barges, and Pacific Rim Plaza. In front of Pacific Rim Plaza, a dinghy course for radio operated sailboats. This exhibit lays out the street grid and anticipated bu buildings in a purely mixed use plan. The area to the east is intended to be the area of most intensive retail development and will include waterfront restaurants, commercial buildings, retail and apartments, and a 120 room business hotel. At the west end, a variety of housing units are anticipated as well as a boutique hotel with, a fine, with fine dining and a spa. The site section featured on the right of the drawing, profile construction utilizing the maximum heights in the plan. In the center of the site, job creation activities um, in buildings that include single and mixed use, retail production, or what we call craft industrial office and apartments. Buildings cluster to obscure parking structure. Um, parking is built at grade to avoid going into the, under, um, into the water uh, areas. And um, at grade two stories, most times covered with planter gardens or green roofs. The four red buildings in the center of the site hide the largest parking area when used for shared parking on weekends to support additional parking needs uh, of the marina then. These parking strategies were endorsed by both the Gibson parking and the Walker parking um, consultants in studies submitted to in the application. Four buildings provide a tremendous opportunity for viewing platforms facing in three directions and accessed on four sides, either by elevator or stairs. This is our version of the harbor steps. This illustration is taken from the southern facing courtyard and features a reflecting pool for toy boat, toy boat races and picnics above the bustle of the streets below. And you can see the orange pathway that is the harbor steps mini version. One last illustration is a street we call a Wernuff. It's a German name. This type of street was created in Germany and is considered, considered an emblem of sustainable design or a living street. The street design will give pedestrian preference over cars and will be frequented for markets and events um, to be closed off with bollards. This street joins the wharf in the Milltown district, which is why we named it Chamfer, which is a name for a mill worker that creates wooden joints. In addition to the city's process, the port has also conducted a number of outreach activities to community leaders, community clubs, and groups to share our plan. Additionally, the port has established a website dashboard on the project. This entire application is available there, a Twitter account, a Facebook account, and publishes regular articles in the Portside Magazine in addition to media outreach. I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to present the project to you. I look forward to delivering the notebooks to you. Um, and on behalf of the port, we look forward to the process as it continues to un unfold. Great. Thank you, Terry. Mm -hmm. uh, questions, comments from the commission? And Terry, I assume you'll be willing to take a few questions if we have some from the commission. Absolutely. Okay. Will there um, be information in the the large books <laughs> that compare the, the amount of um, area or square footage or that's available for the uh, open space and the public access versus the prior plan and this plan? Yes, um, it's in the books. Okay. Um, it's also in the SEPA 
and it's in your on your dais right now. There's a, um, I think it's in there. Okay. It is 2.2C, this plan, and um, it it shows a comparison by type of use. So, um, in some cases, like parking courts, we probably wouldn't have shown that in the comparison, but we had to do an apples to apples to the parking or to the open space plan for the wharf plan. So when you compare by two, the two categories, um, the total open space area in the new plan is 950,000 square feet. The old, old space was 835.5, uh, um, but I would point out that the majority of the new public open space is actually in pure open space, parks and open space. Um, and even though our semi-public open space is less, um, in the semi-public open, semi open space of the wharf plan, um, many of those courtyards were closed off to the public. In our plan, the, there are a number of areas that are semi-public open spaces, which mean for us that they're open from dawn till dusk and not exclusive. So, um, but this is a good uh, comparison, and, and I'm sure you'll have more questions as you study that. Thank you. I just want. Excuse me. I just want to say I appreciate the uh, the explanation of the concepts and the thoughts and the, uh, what went into it, uh, as far as ideas and the visioning. I appreciate that. Uh, it's uh, more than just maps and figures and diagrams. I, it really uh, looks like some some good work went into this, and somebody some people really put their heart and soul into it, and I appreciate that. Any more questions from the commission? Obviously, as you sort through it, I'm sure there'll be more questions and uh, be more presentations and workshops as we go through it. But anything else? This point? Terry, is there, is there a phase? I heard you say in one of your, you're going to start out by. West Marine View Drive? Yeah, we, um, as part of the development agreement, we will have a phasing plan. We've begun to draft that. Um, but our basic strategy is to break the project down into components. Um, I think we show four phases of the project. Um, and our first phase of the project um, will be the Fisherman's Harbor, which is the area nearest to West View Marine Do Drive. Um, we're trying to establish a whole new market here, so we'll start that incrementally. Um, we are not selling this to a master developer to buy the whole thing, um, but if developers are interested in more than one area, they're going to have to um, agree in the development degree to perform to certain standards in order to get more parcels to develop. Um, and we think that the strongest market is, um, the strongest market close of, of what it is today is at the Westview Marine Drive, so we'll start there and then work our way out to the end and then back. Um, the job um, structure in the middle with the three or the four buildings with the parking structure is probably the most costly part of the project and there is the weakest market today for office and so we need to build that. Um, so that's kind of the way we envision it, although if somebody comes to us ready to build the whole thing and um, we can work through our development agreements, then we'll, we'll be ready to go as fast as the market wants us to. Thank you. Will there be um, commitments to match the the design and the the visual aspects of the structures? I mean, what we see is what we'll get, or well, I mean, illustrations are one artist's view of that. In, in this case, Stephanie Bauer is a fantastic illustrator. Um, but the design guidelines are really where you are informed on what needs to be there, and um, there, the design guidelines are extensive. So in addition to the design guidelines, each project will have to be under a development agreement with the port as the master developer, so we'll hold them to those standards as well as the city's design codes. And in the design guidelines, which will be in the notebooks, um, it describes the character of each of the districts within the plan and sort of just like um, Port Gardner Wharf walks you through that to establish the design guideline. But it can be interpreted in different ways. So it won't be like matching the picture, but it, that's just basically the theme of the illustrator. Is that an option for the city is to, in the approval process, require that the development match the, the pictures? 
It's an option. Uh, it's not one that I uh, think we should hold fast and hard to because there's always uh, a uh, the, uh, the possibility that uh, somebody will come along with a new idea that doesn't quite match the guidelines. I think the uh, city's emphasis would be on the quality of design being equivalent to the quality that's represented in the guidelines. Uh, and those are details that we haven't spent enough time uh, looking at just yet. But uh, the city's interest uh, is to have a high quality project and in the criteria that Dave pointed out early in his presentation that the basis for the change has to be that the uh, new plan uh, is in the best long-term interest of the community and part of what goes into that is the design character and quality. The reason I ask is when I take a quick look at the, the view analysis, it appears that the two plans do look different from that in that view analysis. And so my concern would be that if we look at the proposed plan and we look at the view analysis for the proposed plan and we feel that it, it does represent our development that's in the best interest of the community, I would certainly want to find a way to make sure that same type of perspective and view analysis would be represented in the final plan. And uh, I would say that I misunderstood the question uh, a little earlier not to uh, confuse, and maybe I was confused in my own mind, the design guidelines are a little bit different from the view analysis. The view analysis, uh, we would hold uh, the port and any uh, subsequent uh, builders, developers to that uh, view analysis to make sure that it does not exceed the impacts that are represented. I can add to that too. Um, it's quite an interesting process going through developing il illustrations. What we have is the architect takes the height, the highest heights possible, and builds, you know, sort of a wireframe or box box drawings of what the building shapes could be, and then the illustrator uses the design guidelines to kind of imagine what the facade would look like. But the heights and the shapes are kind of in the illustrations and in the view quarter, the largest they could be. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this is a workshop, so I have an opportunity for any public comment. Is there anyone, I don't have anybody who's signed up to speak yet, anyone who'd like to provide any public input as part of the, the workshop? All right, hearing none. Any other questions, comments from uh, commissioners? I would like to ask um, sort of a, a bird's eye view question. In your opinion, I can see how, not, not being very familiar with the project, I really only just am um, seeing it for the first time today, but why pushing things towards the center allows for greater densities and higher heights along the inner, east, uh, inner north edge. But in your, in the port's opinion, how is losing one of three view corridors in the interest of the community, in the best interest of the community? Well, we took, and you'll see when you get larger versions of view corridor that mm -hmm. um, the area, and we tried to take a scientific approach as you can to something that's very subjective and for each person very individual. And we also have met with um, people that live on the bluff aligned with that corridor and showed them the view st study. but. Basically, the, the, area in, the area of blue that you see in that view corridor is a very small percentage of the entire view. And in fact, the new design of the project actually opens up several other areas of the project. So it, it, it actually does promote more, more view. Um, but again, it's a very subjective individual thing. We feel that the benefits of providing the entire community greater access to the water and to these parks that we can create and the economics of pulling the development closer into the site really warrant this request. So we hope that you will consider it carefully. And one other quick question. Um, in the view analysis 2.4a, um, is the left-hand column the previous plan and the illustrations of, on the right-hand side, the current view analysis. Is that how we've been? Yeah, I am. Um, any of the ones that have the tall 90-foot 
five foot tower. So mm -hmm. one, this one, this one. Yes, so all on the left is the tall one. I okay. want to point out too that we have larger versions of this in your book. This is kind of a tiny one for you to even look at, and it is available on the website, but that is correct. The okay. left is, is um, the old plan. Thank you. Here, I have a quick question, uh, and I'm sure this is in the book, and I'll, I'll read it in detail, but in terms of the marina that, with the boats on the north side of the project, it, just looking at it, just uh, the, what you provided us, looks like the, the parking's limited in terms of the people who have boats on that side. On the north marina or the north side? North side of, of the project, so it would be the yeah. south marina that accesses going north. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. There's... There Took me a while to. There's three three basins. There's the south basin, which really parks on the south pier, like by the village, Marina Village, in Anthony's. The central, which parks in the central pier, and which we have done careful parking analysis to reserve some parking for them, in the central pier. And then the north basin, the newest basin, it parks on the jetty pier, so the north pier. So it's the central pier that we're talking about. It, so the parking spots that line the central pier, those are all reserved then for those boat owners down there? Yes, yeah. on that one area. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I assume it'll be in the report that there's enough parking to for them and for everybody else. Yes, it, actually, you know, our friends here at the city pointed out to us that we'd made a mistake on our parking study because we had not clarified that and we went back and, and reevaluated that because it was our intent to reserve parking for the boaters. Um, it's really important to us that we're balancing the needs of the marina with the needs of the upland and that they're both synergistic. And so it is our intention to preserve parking dedicated to the marina. But our um, revised parking study with Gibson did show that we still have enough parking. Okay, great, I'll take a look at it. Any other questions or comments? Um, uh, Alan and uh, Dave, w when do you anticipate this might be far enough along to come to public hearing? Well, we need some direction from you on that uh, once we get into it more. Um, we anticipate the next meeting being more of a workshop and then the meeting after that being a public hearing. So, um, uh, Depending on what we do in the environmental review, um, I, I would anticipate that you would have another meeting in, a, in probably the first part of uh, November. Once we, you know, and I don't know, and if you want to push it through faster and you're comfortable in a, in a couple weeks after that, having a public hearing, that's up to you. And we have to balance it with our other work things. We have the comprehensive plan and such too. So. <laughs> So at this point, we're looking at early November, get feedback yeah. from the commission, yeah. listen to the, the I hate to comments. commit to anything in the uh, end of October at this point, um, you know, uh, basically a month from today. Um, uh, but we, we, you know, that would be the earliest we would do a, a workshop potentially, so. And then the notebooks would be available to us in the next week? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then at that workshop, we can decide kind of next steps or discuss right. that as part of the process. Right, and when you're comfortable, how, how much time you need to review the material and, you know, so. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the commission? Does the port have, do you guys have a timeline? Uh, we want you to have as much time as you need. We're, we would really like to begin marketing the project in January, um, but, we, we are at your mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. If there are no other uh, questions from the commission, <clears throat> a couple of comments. One, uh, we want to make this as easy on the commission as possible. So uh, after you get your uh, notebooks, if you have a uh, request for additional information, uh, I'd like uh, for you to... Um, route those to staff, we can uh, collect those and, and pass those along to the port. Uh, secondly, I want to really uh, express some appreciation for the uh, port and their design team uh, paying attention to all of the comments that we've had in many, many meetings with them. 
uh, to get to the point where the application is today. They've put a lot of effort into uh, improving things from some of the earlier versions that we saw uh, over the past year or so. And final comment, uh, thank staff in particular, Dave Koenig, for uh, the attention to detail that he's put into this and working with a port to uh, get this application into uh, what we feel is a uh, good condition for public review and for your review. So a lot of work has already been done and we'll do a lot more as we go through the process. But anything that we can do to make your review uh, easier, uh, we wanna hear uh, back from you. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. All right, thank you, Terry. Appreciate it.